promoting my soccer universe. <laughs> wow! Yesterday's results were positively crazy. I thought the weekend was already nuts. But yesterday evening, uh, I didn't want to talk much about Coppa Italia, Coppa del Rey, um, but even the Premier League. I mean, I watched the Liverpool Leicester game. I thought this is um, the one with the most impact, and it was it was a quite an interesting game. Uh, let's start right there. I mean, uh, you have to start talking about the pitch condition with the uh, hail corns uh, all over the field, which kind of had a big uh, impact on the pitch. Uh, and its playability, which you know, I always, I still think that this is an advantage for uh, technically skilled teams because they still know what they are. Um, I can see that. Um, also, can 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 go the other, other direction. Anyway, I thought um, it surely made 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 for an interesting game. And also, Liverpool had been off for ten days. I mean, they had a, their small winter break, and they will have a, a, actually another small winter break just ahead of the Bayern clash. So that's also going to be interesting. So. Uh, from one side, I think it's good. On the other side, if you have a momentum going, uh, such a break can slightly derail you. It didn't look from the beginning for Liverpool. I think they came out storming and very quickly made it 1 0 uh, through Mane. I got it right this time. Uh, who just, I mean, it, it was more a roll in than anything else. And again, Leicester con concedes in the first 15 minutes. And you had to fear for Leicester in the first 50 minutes because Liverpool really kept the pressure on. Of course, the big talk is who's going to replace Milner due to his suspension. I've always forgotten about that, that he got sent off by his former gym teacher. That's bad. That's a story in itself. Um, but yeah, the Henderson, I think, played in the Milner role. So there was a little bit imbalance, but I didn't feel it that way. I was more than surprised that after 50 minutes, Leicester could actually um, level the game a little bit, could get a grip on the game and hold Liverpool back. And slowly, slowly work itself into the game. It actually had good chances. And I think it was uh, uh, Madison, with a uh, who did not uh, know whether he should, uh, whether, whether, whether he wanted to have a clear header on goal or whether he wanted to uh, pass it by the head to Vardy, who was not the other, the other idea. I mean, that was a huge chance to equalize. Um, also, at the beginning of the second half, I mean, honestly, I didn't see the first 15 minutes really. Um, but all that I could, I heard is that Leicester had another two great chances. To make the uh, to make the goal, and also that Liverpool should have gotten a penalty. The way it's yeah, the refer the referee's decisions did not go Liverpool's way yesterday. I always had that feeling that uh, the help is not going to come from the ref. Uh, so yeah, it ends one one. I mean, Liverpool tried every everything, but there was never this. I think there was one big save by uh, Schmeichel. That I recall, uh, 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 and that it was all things where yeah, you gotta make those saves and uh, you gotta play a little bit precise. I mean, going forward, I have to say, uh, Liverpool, you could see they have their uh, attacking patterns that are really nicely played, and maybe with a better pitch, the passes would have been weighted better. But that's speculation to me for now. Um, big. Props to Chaudhry of Leicester, who made an uh, enormous tackle. I think Manet had the ball and was running towards goal. It would seem to be a, was 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 about to turn off a really huge chance, and no, he attacked just well before the box and very cleanly played. Also, when I say Chaudhry, uh, I think that, that was his name. Uh, I'm so, in a way, amazed that the Afro is making a calm comeback and I actually like it a lot. Uh, I'm saying that because uh, when I was in my early teens, I got this book of the biggest soccer teams in the world. I think this was kind of, I think I got this in the early 90s. 
and there were uh, the Brazilian teams, Cruzeiro, and, and, and so there were all these players with the big afros, and I said, how do you get this hair up? And it's so great to see that again, uh, because at that time you didn't see that, so I really liked it. I mean, William is the poster child. Well, speaking of Chelsea, that was the first real stunner, uh, I have to say. So, uh, first, Liverpool Leicester ends 1-1. Missed chance for Liverpool to really put some listen, but you know, you may still increase your advantage from uh, four to five points. But yeah, could have been seven, could have been seven. So I think four or five points of difference, it is there, but it's you know, it's not a big difference. But yeah, um, you gotta keep up making points, otherwise, the advantage goal goes away. The title race is still on. Um, so Chelsea plays at Bournemouth, Egoin makes his debut and is a no-show, more or less. And while Chelsea had probably a good grip on the game in the first half, from what I could tell from the highlights, in the second half, uh, very quickly Bournemouth makes the 1-0 and Chelsea crumbles. And, around, uh, and falls into a four-goal deficit uh, to Bournemouth, which is an absolutely stunning result to me. Uh, that I didn't expect, but you, I have the feeling that you know, Chelsea is really hitting a rough, rough patch, and now uh, Arsenal definitely overtook them. The other North London team, uh, Tottenham, was one 0 down to Watford, I think at halftime, and turned around. I mean, Llorente missed a big one, but um, you know, they had Sonbeck. That counted for a lot because now you have at least some offensive power back in your team. And they turned the game around. It was 2-1 uh, at the end. And now they're within two points of Manchester City. So Tottenham Spurs are not uh, gone yet. Just at the moment where you think that uh, Spurs will fall away and Chelsea now with E. Gwyn will make the search. Nope. It goes the exactly other way, but it was that type of a crazy match day. And I think Crystal Palace and Southampton played a 1-1 one -one draw, which doesn't really help either one of them. Uh, but with all that, since we had the Newcastle win, Newcastle now put actually a little bit of distance between them and the relegation zone. So, uh, not say they're safe by any means, but you know, uh, the relegation battle is still on. Uh, but very real, but uh, there is already there's the bottom three and then there's a slight gap, so you know I would still say that the bottom three are the ones that uh, are most likely to get relegated, I feel sorry for Fulham, I have some sympathy for Fulham so that's where that goes um, where shall we go next I think Copa del Rey uh, we had Betis beating Espanyol 3-1 uh, so they are on to the semi-finals and then of course it was the other Seville uh, Barcelona clash that I think everyone was looking forward to and Barcelona more or less brought the goods to the table uh, with featuring Messi and Suarez and kind of when you have Messi and Suarez on the pitch uh, there's the intent yeah we are taking this now serious and serious that they take it uh, got a penalty early on, Coutinho makes it 1-0, uh, Coutinho played this time alongside Messi and Suarez, maybe it should get a little bit more practice to get into the squad because at the moment he is more or less a bust for Barcelona. Uh, so that ended, uh, was 1-0, then Sevilla got a uh, penalty, horrible foul by Piquet, I mean not, hor not horrible in terms of injury but uh, for an experienced player like Piquet, that should not happen. Uh, but Silesen saves it, and again, Silesen is the backup goalkeeper. This guy could play at any other team, he would be a first team goal goalkeeper, he's the backup goalkeeper for Barcelona. Uh, it's really crazy. I mean, yes, Messi is irreplaceable, although when he was out early, early this year, Suarez picked up the slack. So, uh, it's definitely uh, Barcelona. Say what you will, but I think Barcelona is by far the best team in Europe at the moment. And at the show, I mean, Sevilla is the fourth place team and is one of the best teams in Spain. And what happened to them? I mean, it was 2 0 at halftime. I think it was another Coutinho goal. I'm, uh, 
I know Cortina made two. I, I'm I'm missing now the uh, who made the goals a little bit. Um, they made it quickly three 0 and then even four 0 I think uh, Sergio Roberto. Uh, that that was a beautiful goal uh, with what Messi Messi uh, made the pass and Sergio Roberto pulled, pulled it in. Then um, there was a goal for Sevilla for one. So there only one goal goal away, but Barcelona. Never blinks. I think Suarez makes it 5 1 Messi and 6 1. 6 1. I mean, it was a celebration. They were, uh, the last two goals were both absolute beauties. Uh, this is Barcelona at their best. Uh, one touch football, looking around. How, how can we humiliate the opponent most? So Barcelona moves on and uh, it seems so ridiculous in, in in a way. Yeah, we have the second string team play in the um, in the first leg, and then yeah, we're gonna take it serious at home and still for a fresh you and get you out of the competition. Absolutely mind-boggling to me uh, that they can do that. So yeah, I think this year's Champions League. After that, the front is definitely Barcelona's to lose. They are huge favorites, and then we get to Italy. If you thought crazy results were what I talked already about, I mean, the Coppa Italia results yesterday were absolutely insane. Atalanta against Juventus, and I didn't see the lineups, but from what I could, could see in the um, um, highlights, Juventus played with a good team. There was Ronaldo in there, all the players that you would expect were in there. And they are fresh by Atalanta 3-0. 3-0. Zapata being at the moment out of his mind. Atalanta is a super dangerous team at the moment. Absolutely super dangerous team that no one wants to play. Uh, they have been for a while. So yeah, 3-0 they move on and Juventus is out of the cup competition. Uh, that in itself is unbelievable. But then what happened at Fiorentina Roma? And I, it's funny because uh, when you hear the com when you heard the commentator, yeah, here's Chiesa with a counter-attack, makes it 1-0. Roma responds well, uh, take control of the game, run into another counter-attack by Chiesa to make it 2-1, a uh, 2-0. But Roma responds well, uh, and they get the they get the 2-1 by Kolarov. Then I think Benassi, I'm not sure who, who, who made the third goal. Again, a count, counter-attack. Roma shows some spirit, blah, 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 blah. They end up losing 7-1. 7-1. I think Simeone made the last two goals. Chiesa made a hat trick. Benassia score, I think scored one. Um, Muriel maybe scored one. You know, I I with seven goals and not, not having any notes here. Seven one. Jacob got sent off for uh, snapping totally at the referee. Um, I think this will count for Milan game on Sunday, so check go out, that's for sure an, an advantage. Um, I'm not sure, I think there will be also some, there's some suspensions from the league. I might, they might have, I don't know how it is if, if league and cup are now the, uh, if those suspensions count. I know red, red cards count. So, but you know, this Roma side will be a little bit decimated against Milan. Uh, I don't want to say a big word honestly because. Uh, this is exactly what uh, Milan is not very good, good at being favorites and you know, away. But Roma had not two, two really tough results. I mean, being up 3 0 at Atalanta, only making it 3 3. And then now this 1 7 to Fiorentina, and all credit to Fiorentina. Uh, I always said, I told you, Fiorentina is a fun team to watch, and they got unleashed now. I'm gonna. It's gonna be in, in, interesting of how it will pan out for uh, Serie A, but both teams played with uh, what the best they could offer. They took this seriously, so um, that's a huge result to me. That is absolutely a stunner. Uh, and probably the result of the evening. I mean, Fiorentina absolutely dismantling and putting. Uh, into pieces and by the way the jersey matchup was really nice Fiorentina in all purple I prefer that over the purple and black 
I know the proper black is a historic look, but Fiorentina or purple really looks super. And Roma in their yellow against that. That was a that's a really really nice color match. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I didn't like what Juventus was playing in with their uh, beige jersey and white pants against them. I think they could play in the first uh, jersey there. But no. So Coppa Italia, Fiorentina against Atalanta is one semi final, and Milan will play the win of Inter Lazio. Um, one may be tempted to say that Milan or in, uh, the first semi final is the one that everyone will be talking about. Don't discount Atalanta. Don't discount Atalanta, there we go. Uh, it's for sure going to be in interesting. AVA will have a new winner. So there will be one trophy not going to Juventus this year, uh, which might not be a bad thing overall. But yeah, highly interesting stuff happening in Europe yesterday. Uh, cannot be overstated. This was really absolutely nuts what was happening uh, yesterday. The England results with Liverpool missing a chance, Chelsea getting uh, destroyed by Bournemouth. Barcelona just walking over Sevilla and then uh, Atalanta beating Juve and Fiorentina. That for me is the result of the seven one against Roma. But Roma has this in the, in in them from time to time. So I'm looking for I'm looking forward to the weekend uh, Milan Roma Roma Milan match up. Um, you know my two favorite teams in Italy. Oh, I still will be for Milan. That's the way how it goes. They are my. How, how do they say it? One B love, one A is Lusk. So yeah. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought about yesterday's results. Uh, I'm still a little bit in disbelief. Um, leave me, drop me a line, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.